Um, do we have a motion to approve uh, the minutes that were sent on out as, as part of the packet? I so move. All right, Jacques, thanks. Is there a second? Second. Okay, so a second from Sandy uh, is the first hand I saw there, so we'll go with that. Uh, any comments on the minutes before we uh, uh, do the vote? I do. Corey? I have a couple, two updates or corrections. All right, um, David, what are those? Uh, let me see if I got to find them here quick. Sorry, I was in the process of looking for this before, uh, but you got to it quicker and I could find it. <laughs> Hold uh -huh. on. Tay, while you're tracking that down, why don't we go to Courtney? I think Courtney had a couple of uh, uh, some, some comments on it as well, and then we'll come back to you there, David. Yes, that, my only comment is that my last name has two L's in it, and it's spelled with one L in the meeting minutes whenever my name is mentioned. Sounds good. All right, correction with the name spelling there. Always important there. And uh, uh, David, we're able to uh, come back to uh, uh, the comments. Uh, I haven't found it yet. Um, okay. Were there I any other tell. comments uh, from from Sandy or, or, or Jacques or, or Liz or Joe? Not okay. Uh, uh, David. Oh yes. Um, I mean, I, I haven't found it, but in one end, there was, a, when I had mentioned, um, uh, maybe it was at the closing minutes about uh, public input, uh, uh, kind of focusing on Mountain Avenue. It's at Mountain Avenue between uh, airport and Hover, and it just, in the, in the minutes, though I can't find it, it says, uh, Mountain at Hover, so it's it's on, on Mountain View. The trouble, the input that we've had for public to be heard is between Hover and Airport on Mountain View. Well, I I haven't been able to locate it on that. Looks like okay, it's so on just page eight. You're talking about your comments, David. The Mountain yeah. View and Airport Road. That's right. Page eight, second to the last paragraph, and it says the complaints regarding road and speed issues surrounding Mountain View and Airport Road. That's what it currently says. Yes, what it what it should say is on Mountain View between Airport and Hover. Okay. Seems reasonable. Any other comments? No. So we have a motion to approve the minutes there uh, um, uh, with uh, uh, hopefully with those adjustments there. All in favor of approving the minutes there with uh, those adjustments, uh, raise your hand or say aye. 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 And Joe, don't have your video there, but are you uh, supportive of uh, the minutes? Aye. Yep. Oh, sorry. Video is not on. My apologies. All right. Fair enough. Uh, any opposed? All right, the minutes are approved. Uh, communications from staff. Hey, Tyler, Phil, and Ben, and Jim. Hope you guys are doing well. Any, uh, Happy New Year any to all. Your side? Um, just want to say thank, thanks for hanging on tonight. We've got a bit of a special meeting, a little different than normal. Um, keep to a relatively quick timeline here, about 645. We'll jump off of this meeting, and you all should have another link to the joint session meeting with council and RTD members. So if anyone doesn't have that, let me know and we can work on getting that to you. A um, couple other things, just some work updates, railroad closures. We still are anticipating being at that BNSF repairs on Main Street at First Avenue will require a full closure of Main Street. Uh, initially, the work was scheduled for earlier this month. That's been delayed. They intend to re 
reassess and see if they can do that later in the month. I, su it, I suspect it might, it is due, due to road te temperatures of the ground. So if they have really cold temperatures, trying to pour concrete may impact their schedule again. So um, generally later in January, he's probably not gonna see a warming trend, but we'll see what, we'll see what weather holds for us. Um, over how, how long do you envision Main Street being closed? I would expect it's probably going to be um, a week project. I'm hoping for less than a week, but I would plan on about a week of it's a full reconstruct of that crossing, remove the rails, move the surface, and some additional concrete on the road surface has to be removed and then replaced. So it'll be um, it'll be an impact to, to that section of Main Street for sure. Yeah, and I take it the communications person, the city is going to be uh, communicating with uh, the local newspapers and community. Yeah, we will be coordinating with public outreach to the extent we can. And and keep in mind, this is a BNSF project, BNSF and CDOT. So we're doing our best to um, make our position be heard and, and make sure that those entities understand the impacts to us. But ultimately, it is, the, is their project that they're doing. Um, if anyone's been out and about on Hover, they may have you may have seen some message boards out today. We do anticipate some lane shifts for, um, I believe, on the 13th. So starting in the morning, 930 in the morning till wee hours of the next morning. We'll have some lane shifts in place. It's for leak detection on one of the main water transmission lines out there. So if you see work areas and lane shifts out there, that's what's going on there. Um, Bill, I think you had a couple other things you wanted to mention, so I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Tyler. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, Phil Greenwald, Transportation Planning Manager with the city. Just wanted to do some quick, um, uh, I guess, just some quick info items. Really just one big one is uh, we've just heard back from uh, um, a group called the Denver Regional Council of Governments. I think we've talked about in this group quite a bit, so I'm hoping you know Dr. Cog. Um, also, CDOT was working on these projects as well as far as getting dollars out to folks uh, for some projects dealing with alternative modes and safety projects. And we were able to combine that into one $1.2 million project at Sunset and Ken Pratt Boulevard or Highway 119. So if you think about Sunset kind of going through that area, we've done some major work south of Ken Pratt Boulevard where we consolidated a four lane road down to a, what we call a three lane road with bike lanes. And we have bike lanes north of that, north of Nelson. And what we're trying to do is connect from Nelson south to basically Kansas where the project starts further south there. We're trying to fill that gap as it were with a project and just make that intersection safer for all, all traveling public. So we're excited that we finally, we kind of knew it was coming, but we had to kind of keep it quiet because it wasn't public yet. And so CDOT let us, know that they had officially uh, approved that project. And so we can go out there with them and vigor and say that, yeah, we've we got the $1.2 million. We're pretty excited about that project. And uh, we're hoping to go after some other projects here, but it's really based on our, our resources and what we have at the city to be able to actually get those complete. Because what we're seeing now is that um, a lot of this money needs to be spent quickly. And we have to show that, you know, we're making progress. So. We've got some other projects that kind of fall under that CARES Act. If you've heard about all all the funding from the federal government based on the on CARES and the, and the COVID piece, uh, there's some money available there that we're going after as well. But it's gonna it's gonna be um, you know dependent on how quickly you can move projects forward. So uh, I think that's it. Unless Tyler, you thought I should talk about anything else, but uh, I think that's it for me. Thanks. Any questions or? Great, thank you. Sounds like good news on uh, on Sunset. All right. Anything else from staff? Okay, I don't think we have any members of the public to be heard, but uh, just uh, uh, do an invitation there. Are there any members of the public to be heard? All right, well, why don't we roll into our action in there with the Transportation um, Advisory Board work plan. And uh, uh, Tyler, is that uh, when you want to kick off? Absolutely. Thank you, Chair. Um, so each year we do a January meeting is a good time to, to reassess what we hope to accomplish and, and work on. 
um, with this meeting, we put together a, a proposed work plan, and I would say it's not a hard and fast. We don't. We can definitely make additions or deletions to this as we work throughout the year, and as new issues come up, we can definitely adjust the schedule. But but really, kind of set the groundwork for what we hope to accomplish and things we want to see brought to this board this year. A lot of the items you'll see on here are repeats. We do a lot of the same issues or a lot of the same topics every year, the capital improvement program being a big one that <clears throat> that this board provides input on on a year to year basis. Um, we generally do an RTD meeting, which will be <clears throat> we do anticipate doing another RTD meeting later in the year. Um, in addition to the one tonight. Um, handful of other projects going on. Our plan land use amendments, we can bring those to you as they're coming through the development process, if that's something the board's interested in seeing. And any bike pad, traffic safety funds, crash reports, a slew of projects on there. So feel free to uh, discuss, comment, request. We are asking for an action on this. So with that, I'll let, the, let you guys discuss. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Tyler. <coughs> so hopefully everyone's had a chance to be able to look at the uh, the work plan that's uh, part of uh, uh, the agenda here. Um, are there any comments on uh, the work plan? Any questions, clarifying questions, uh, other thoughts on the work plan? I think a lot of things on here are you know, things that, that we've seen here in, in the past. Um, uh, David, great, no comments on this? Uh, Jacques, I'm sorry? I just wanted to jump in real quick and just say that this all looks good and I really appreciate it this time of year it kind of maps out like the deliverables that kind of we as a uh, a transportation board need to look at what's our schedule too because there's stuff we need to approve and stuff that we need to be aware of um so i just appreciate it this all looks good to me okay thanks just one quick uh, comment on, on my side uh, looks good to me as well uh tyler just a, a favorite ask there i noticed that uh, the neighborhood traffic mitigation program uh, follow up conversation there is scheduled for some time in Q2, uh, which sounds fine. Uh, if it's possible to be able to have that in uh, April or May, that would be great. I, I know personally I'll be out the month of June. Um, so, uh, and we'd love to be able to participate in that conversation. So, it's possible to be able to have neighborhood traffic mitigation in, in April or May, that would be great. Great. Um, any last comment before we seek to uh, uh, for a motion to approve the work plan? All right. Do we have uh, someone who's willing to offer a motion to approve the 2021 work plan? Motion to approve. All right. Joe, motion to approve there. Is there a second? Chuck? Second. Great. All in favor, raise your hand. Any opposed? All right, looks like everyone's in favor of moving that forward there. And uh, uh, Tyler, thanks for uh, giving us a plan for 2021. All right, and then as it relates to uh, uh, the information items there, uh, looks like we have an update on the quiet zones. Thank you, Chair. So this came up at the last meeting we had, there was a comment from the board to bring back some information updates on quiet zones. Where are we at? Where are we going? Where, we, where have we been? Um, so there's a communication in your packet to really try and summarize that information where we're at. As you know, we were selected in February 2020. We received notification that we were successful in our grant application for federal funding, which is going to provide $4 million in matching funds towards implementing safety improvements so that we could then establish quiet zones. Um, bulk of my work in the last year has been working through the obligation process with FRA, the Federal Railroad Administration is 
the, the administrator of those dollars. Uh, we had to do a lot of work to get all of our environmental and historical clearances. And at the same time, we're still continuing to finalize designs. We are also, in order to get the first round of construction or the first round of intersections under construction, we are still working or waiting on a final construction and maintenance agreements from BNSF. So a lot of moving pieces in this one, a lot of a lot of hands in the pot between City of Longmont, FRA, BNSF, and State Preservation Commission. So we've had to do a lot of work on the on the front end of this, and I'm hoping that we can get this going and start seeing some improvements here in the next the next couple of years. Right now, we're planning on doing we're planning on having improvements at five crossings this year: Third Avenue, Longs Peak, Ninth, Seventeenth, and Emory. Memory Street's not part of the grant, but that's a separate capital improvement project. I think that's really the, the bulk of what I had to, to offer on this one, to, just a brief update and any questions at this point with quiet zones or. Yes, I understand. <laughs> you had mentioned, I'm not real clear on standalones um, in the quiet zone you mentioned in the information you provided us that the one on Mountain View is going to be a standalone but how many other places do you anticipate being standalones or is this the only one and I don't know what a standalone is so board member Stewart the, the thing to keep in mind with these quiet zones is that the trains required to start sounding the whistle a quarter mile in advance of each crossing so some of those closely spaced crossings that we see in Old Town, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, Longs Peak, they're all spaced at a block apart. So you can't do, if you do safety improvements at one, the, horn, the, the whistle's still going to be sounding right through that crossing because it's sounding for the next one in line either direction. And so really you have to have a quarter mile spacing or more between each crossing to where you could do an individual crossing by itself. Mountain View is one where it is spaced far enough either direction that that one could be implemented as a standalone by its own. And there may be some other ways we can package that to get uh, maybe leverage that improvements at one intersection towards maybe speeding up the process of implementing a quiet zone at others. It would be on a temporary basis, but then we'd come back and do the permanent improvements. So there's a couple of strategy items there, but Mountain View. The short answer is Mountain View could be done and established as a quiet zone by itself. 17th, 21st, Highway 66, those are the ones that really could be standalone quiet zones. Thank you. Thank you for explaining that. Hey, Jacques. I was trying to remember, I, my memory's failing me here. With the federal money, Tyler, is there any deadline requirements, you know, deliverables that we're we're kind of needing to adhere to or is this kind of open given all the partners that we have on this great question there there are deadlines we are working through what those deadlines are with fra they, there is some flexibility in terms of 2020 was a a challenging year from a lot of fronts so so we do have deadlines we are currently still meeting all of those deadlines okay thank you Any other questions on uh, rubber quiet zones? Well, thanks, Tyler. I can imagine the process of working with uh, BNSF and anyone else on, on top of BNSF is uh, um, complicated at best. So um, thanks for your, your help with that. All right, well, let's keep plowing forward here. Uh, any comments from board members, um, either on items that were raised today, items you've seen around town, anything else top of mind as it relates to uh, transportation related issues in Longmont. So, um, all right, Liz, why don't you start us off? First, I wanna say um, thank you for all the work toward quiet zones. I know that that was something that a lot of people felt really strongly about. Um, one of the places I saw a lot of that feeling was in next door and uh, during the past month, it was interesting watching conversations on the Nextdoor app 
as people were talking about where they were having problems and wanted to have uh, traffic mitigation. And when I noticed that, I said, well, here's the web page for the city, and this is where you start, what you need to do. And I realized that we probably could be doing better um, at outreach, but that's kind of overall, I wish we could do a citizenship in the community merit badge for adults, because so many people don't know how to interact with the government. It's always them and they and their money. And it's like, I felt as I watched people talk about it, we need to do more outreach on how they can get involved. And I think that was part of what we were gonna do with changing the rules about traffic mitigation. But I just wanna mention that that's an ongoing issue of people understanding how to interact with the Longmont government. Awesome, thank you. Sandy, you wanna go next with uh, any comments on, on your side? Yes, thank you for all your work. I, I traveled down uh, Mountain View West um, from um, Hover to Airport Road, and I saw at Harvard the new crosswalk that was placed in where the flashing lights will go when you want to cross the street, and how I appreciate that. And I, and I do remember we've had a number of people um, comment about the speeds on Mountain View and uh, the hazards of children crossing um, and the worry of them getting hit. So thank you very much for putting that there and I know it's going to be used. And that's it. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Sandy. Courtney, you want to go next there with uh, any comments on your side? Sure. Um, I just want to say the work plan is really good and I appreciate everything that goes into that and it looks like a, a good list for us to keep continuing working on this year. Thank you. Thank you, Courtney. Jacques, you want to jump in after that? Um, I think I've talked enough tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pass. I, 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 here's to 2021. We got a good work plan and I'm excited for it. Sounds good. Joe, I will uh, hand it over to you next. Any comments on your side? I'll be abnormally quiet for once. Fair enough. David? I just want to second uh, Sandy's comment about the uh, pass uh, pedestrian crossing on Mountain View. I also went through it uh, two weeks ago, and um, it looks good. I I am looking forward to seeing if uh, if the public invited to be heard or comments that we may get uh, indicate that they the neighbors are also happy with it. That's all I have. Sounds good. Thanks, David. Only thing I'll add, uh, Tyler and, and Phil, this is more of a question for the two of you. Um, uh, in, in thinking about the conversation with uh, RTD's new general manager coming up here at seven o'clock, um, are there any topics that you think would be important for us to be, you know, in particular listening for um, or anything else uh, timely that, that we can help reinforce as an advisory board? I can start off if Tyler doesn't mind. Um, just uh, wanted to let you know, I think what we're really trying to do is that this is more of a meet and greet and you should just understand the format is going to be kind of council led, unfortunately for you guys on this, um, but fortunately for, for council member Peck. But um, so, uh, you know, Aaron Rodriguez is the mayor pro tem and he'll be running the show tonight. But we are making sure that the TAB does have a chance to ask questions. So that's kind of why I throw that flippant comment in about the council running the show. This is your time is why I say that. But um, the council really is the, the governing board of this. So um, there, there will be um, chances for you to ask questions, obviously. But it really is a meet and greet for you to uh, find out who these people, the new people are, and kind of what their stance is on different things. You'll probably want to hear about their their long and short term goals. Uh, I think one thing that you may want to bring up as a TAB is really the idea, and, and council may do this as well, is the idea of more localized control of maybe local transit routes. Might be something you 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 just see the, res the response and see how folks are thinking about those kind of things. Obviously, they're going to probably cover fast tracks early on in their comments because they know that's exactly their their staff is 
has already prepped them with the idea that they're, they're going to hear loud and clear about a train tonight. And so um, they'll probably be prepped for that. But it's also about getting RTD help for our first and main project. You know, that's fast tracks. Those are fast tracks dollars that people forget about the $17 million of actual fast tracks dollars. So it's, it is our tax dollars coming back to the community, which is a, is a good thing to, to kind of hear about. And so uh, hopefully they know a little bit or enough about that. Uh, we will have one board member who is from uh, what's called District O, which is really Western Longmont. So anybody who lives west of Hover, uh, Lynn Geisinger is actually your representative. So yeah, um, Sandy um, and, and probably others. But so Lynn Geisinger is your representative. She's been there for a number of years already, two years, I believe. And so uh, she's kind of the veteran, I believe, among this group. And so feel free to ask her questions too. She has some more background, but they are leading this whole idea of changing the governance and the structure at RTD to be really more inclusive of the locals and letting us have more of a voice in decisions that are made rather than it just being a centralized, you know, Denver centric system. So maybe some things that you want to talk about. Also, if you have any issues with things you've heard from writers or or have heard in previous TABs about you know kind of the the state of the bus system if you've heard good things that's good to share if you've heard bad things that's probably good to share as well and Sandy you probably have a lot of information on that front based on some of the work you've done in, in your uh, in previous uh, in previous work you've done but uh, just a just kind of, it's just a general sense, you know, if this was to be any other year, this would probably be more of a reception than a than kind of a formal meeting. And we do plan on having kind of the what we call like the RTD grilling session in March, where we invite staff to come by and tell us about ridership and projections. And of course, this year it's going to be much different because the ridership is is way down, right? And and every you know they've just had a they had three rounds of layoffs. Uh, last week, and so we did lose some some staff members that we we work with quite we were we were working with quite a bit. One on the one a person was on the first and main station planning effort, so that's going to be a loss for us. But uh, so they've been doing a lot of things, I think, to try to shore up their their costs and their expenses, and and they've obviously laid off a lot of drivers too. So it's a tough time for them. So just remember that when we're kind of talking to them today and on in March. <laughs> That they've been through the ringer quite quite a bit, but that we do still think that change is important. And uh, I just throw that out there. And sorry, I probably took all of Tyler's time, but <laughs> yes, Council Member Peck. Oh, uh, Joan, looks you. like you're on mute. <laughs> so one thing that, if you're interested, that I think might be appropriate for Tab is question on the uh, the fairness of our different levels of passes that's been a uh, that's been a conversation about there's too many they're too confusing um, and and um, basically asking if they were going to address that because that that affects all of us thank you great any additional yeah, we are, comments I, I should say that there's been a push lately to do a fair fee system across the whole district, which would be great for us because we're kind of paying for our small portion of it. But there's there's a push that, and this is happening all across the country. Well, not all across, but it's happening in various large metropolitan areas like Kansas City has has adopted this, and and some others are are in California are as well. But it's just a like a fair fee system across. Because it does cost a lot actually to collect fares, and that whole that whole piece does cost a lot of money. So it's it's kind of balancing that level, and we do pay taxes. So great, thanks, Phil. Hey, one quick follow up question on that: Did uh, so I know it was part of the federal legislation that was signed into law a week and a half, two weeks ago, um, that was supposedly going to be including some dollars for for transit agencies like RTD. Do we ever hear back in terms of uh, what that came on out to and what that's going to be going towards? I just got an email right before this uh, this meeting. Two hundred three point four million dollars 
RTD expects to 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 get from from that. So that's the apportionment to RTD. And that's and another. Hopefully, we'll, we'll talk about that tonight. Sorry. Yeah. No, I I butted in, as usual. But that would be another good question for Tab. What what are our expectations for that money? Yeah. Sounds good. Great. Thanks so much for the update there, Phil. Uh, comments from uh, Council Liaison uh, uh, Peck. Uh, anything else above and beyond uh, the RTD conversation? No, I think I've said enough. Thank you. Fair enough. Well, uh, any upcoming transportation meetings besides the one in 30 minutes uh, that uh, folks want to put on to uh, the rest of the group's radar? I could not find any on my calendar for the next month, so we'll keep our eyes posted. If we uh, if we do hear of anything, we will uh, certainly forward that along. Sounds good. Well, Councilmember Perfect. Peck is. Yep. Okay, Chris Quinn, uh, the project manager for RTD, is having one tomorrow morning. I'm trying to. It's going to be at 10 a.m. Um, is for for uh, it's a meeting for local officials as an update. Um, am I looking at the correct one, Phil? It looked like that's when it was, uh, but I think anybody can listen in. Yeah, he did not invite staff to that, so I don't have it on my calendar. Oh, uh, I'm might sorry. Just be for, might just be for elected officials. Okay. I'll see. I'll see if you can, if we can uh, if anybody can tune into that, and if so. I will send Tyler the, the link and he can send it out to join. Interesting. Thanks. It takes place just as the, uh, the new Boulder County commissioners are going to be uh, installed into their new office. So. Interesting. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, I, I know uh, the upcoming meeting will be talking about the equitable carbon uh, free transportation activities. So uh, interested to hear more about that. Um, anything else pressing before we uh, sign off and we'll reconvene at seven o'clock there as part of the, uh, the RTD meeting. Just say, is there anyone that doesn't yet have the link for the meeting RTD meeting? Anyone need help with that or. <clears throat> Council Mayor Beck didn't come through to you or. You... It didn't. I don't know why, but. Okay. Thank you. Great. Sandy, did you have it or did you need it? Oh, you're on mute there still. Would you mind sending it to me again in case I deleted it? I can do that. Thank you. I mean, just it's on Zoom platform, so it'll be a little bit different than this meeting, but it's a Zoom meeting. So. Right. And just quickly, okay. just the reason why we had to do this, I think you all got it in the hopefully you got it in the console in the column or, or in the information, but uh, Council and RTD both meet on Tuesday nights at the same exact, well, basically the same time. So we we had to kind of hijack your meeting a little bit here to to make it work. And I appreciate your your patience and your time to to do that. I think it's going to be, I think it'll be really uh, great to hear. I think you'll really enjoy the new general manager and the new uh, board member for our our district. So uh, look forward to seeing you guys all at seven. All right, sounds good. Yeah. Thanks so much, Phil. Thanks, Tyler. Uh, thanks, Council Member Peck. And uh, we'll see you guys in half an hour. Just, just jumping in real quick, Phil. I think we're supposed to jump into that meeting like a quarter of. Right. Because there is a check in for that. So that while the meeting starts at seven, um, I think they want you to check in by by 10 of. So try to get there 20 of maybe. Okay. So everybody gets a bio break for about 10 minutes. 10 minutes. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks, Jim. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Thank we'll you. see you later on. Thank you. Yeah, Thank